Howard Lovecraft once stated, the oldest and strongest emotion of mankind is fear, and the oldest and strongest kind of fear is the fear of the unknown. East Coast Ghost Trackers, and this is Maine's Most Haunted. I'm Ken Ort. I'm founder of East Coast Ghost Trackers. And I'm Jamie Doobie, the co-founder. I just seen the shows on TV and wanted to see if it was real. We have nine members on our team and everybody has their own little job and everybody does a good job. We're heading down to the Carriage House Inn in Searsport, Maine. It's an old Victorian bed and breakfast built in the 1800s. There's been a lot of reports from people that stay there from the owner that actually lives there. It wasn't until I actually purchased the inn and started uh, making my way around the town of Searsport that I began to hear the stories that what I had bought was a haunted house. So then I started renting out my rooms and slowly but surely the guests who were staying here would come downstairs and inevitably in the morning they would say, did you hear a noise of a ball bouncing? I was having my own experiences as time went by. My dog was experiencing uh, things as well. And as time went by, I started identifying certain sounds. I started learning more about the, the property, who had lived here, more about the, the family members who had died. I felt the presence of a child. Um, I didn't know that a child had died here. Uh, the child fell out of my third floor bedroom window. There's been reports of a little boy that's been pushed out the window on the third floor. It was possible that the little boy was pushed out of that window by the little boy's dog. We think that this entity messing with Jimmy, the resident dog. And they say dogs and, and, and children are, are closer to being able to connect uh, with, with the supernatural. Um, my bedroom, was, as a matter of fact, was one of the places that my dog shunned from the time we came here. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? What was whoa. that? What? 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 Sorry, Pete. Wow. <laughs> what? All right, let's go do it. We usually take about, oh, anywhere, depending on the size of the place, from an hour to an hour and a half to set up. If all team members involved in the setup, certain people have certain jobs. Like we have a couple people that set up the cameras and some people that take the trigger objects and put them out. It's a trigger objects, is what we call these. And basically, it's weight sensitive. So the minute something comes up and touches the little man doll that I put on top of this, it automatically goes off and a sign mean goes off. And right here, we have an IR camera that's pointing right on it. So if that man moves, the alarm sounds, we see it at Command Central and we catch it on video. We use infrared cameras because they pick up different spectrums of light that we cannot see with our eyes. We can use up to 12 cameras, depending on the size of the location. After the investigations, you have to think how much evidence that is to go over. Because you've got four to eight cameras, and you know we usually are at least at a hunt for six hours. So that's a lot of footage. This is a ghost touch. And we have two different versions of this. We have a touchless version, where the entity can just move, move its energy over the top of it, and it goes off, which we set that up on the other side, uh, Hannah and Stacy did. This one, they actually have to touch it, and when they do, it goes off. Uh, some people like to use flashlights, twists on the end. We 
Sometimes we do, but we like to use these instead because it's less room for error. So when something, something entity or a spirit comes up to this and touches this, then you know you have activity. Something is, is making that go on. The center command is where we have usually two people sitting there to keep an eye on the cameras. It depends on how many cameras we have, but we usually like to keep two people together at all times. We call the geoform and it runs off from touch. As soon as that stops, you, get to, you try to get the entity to come up and touch it. When they do, and it's very sensitive, and we like to hang this so that nobody bumps into it. And that is it. So if something touches this in this bedroom, we'll, we'll put the IR camera on it. So if there's any entity in this bedroom that would like to touch this, please do for us so that we can kind of track where you're at tonight. And we'll be back. In this room, in previous investigation, we had a set of marbles that went around in a circle and we put one in the middle. And uh, I made a bargain with them. I told them that they kept, if they moved one of the marbles, that they could keep it. And it actually did move one of the marbles, and I don't know if she was, she was supposed to leave it in one of these rooms here, with one of these drops. But I think tonight we're gonna put a ball on here to see if we can get a ball to move for us in this room. We call this the marble room. Stacy is about to use the spirit box to try and communicate with the entities. The theory behind the spirit box is that it uses radio frequencies and scans up and down the bands, which allows the entity to communicate to us through the white noise. Now is that the one? Can you speed that up? Or? No, it's Is there anybody here with us? If there is, can you tell us your name? Can you tell us again? We can start with something like, can you say Pete? Pete, good job. Can you say Stacy? Stacy. Pete hears noises over by the stairs and goes to investigate. Can you come upstairs for us? I can hear you down there. Who's down there? Is it you, Michael? Why don't you walk up the stairs for us? Come on up and play, we'll play with you. I've got candy. Oh! My K2 just left. Oh, this one is too. Oh, I like that. <laughs> oh, I'll leave this for you. Look at that. Brought it just for you. Can you come over here and move that piece of candy? Come set these lights off again. You can even play with this ball here. Light these lights up again for us. That was me. Is that not the type of candy you like? What about bubble gum? You want some bubble gum? 
That's hard candy. You said you like rock candy, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. So, see? Why? There nice. they go. You like Even though this wasn't detected by our audio equipment, Pete and the girls hear a strange ringing sound. I don't know. That was a weird sound. Did you hear that? I did. It was weird. It was like a, like a chime or. I, I can't even recreate it. I'm trying to think. It was like a ringing, it. ringing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's exactly yeah. what I just heard. <laughs> and it was over here. It was. I'm not yeah. No, I hear Is there like something? <clears throat> you over by that rocking horse? I'm going to knock on this table right here. Then I want you to come up and do the same. Or you don't have to do it here. You can do it anywhere around. But I'm going to knock on this table. I want you to finish this for me, okay? Try it again. You ready? This is also an area in a previous investigation that one of our investigators had an experience with an orb, which we will show you later on. I have this device in my hand. If you uh, wish to speak to us, if that's your only means of communicating. Oh my God, you see that? This Octopus. It is? Look at it. I did see it. Man. Did you see it move? Look, it's moving. It's moving. Can you move that some more? Dude, it's moving. It is moving. Look at it. That's you. Can you it's move it more. harder? Move it some more? Feel free to take our energy. Oh, did you see that? I did. We just wrapped up and we're finished for tonight. We had a great night. We caught a lot of paranormal evidence. Uh, the first part of the night, we, the girls were in the loft. There was an octopus in that room, uh, a toy of some sort, that had moved on Hannah and Stacy and Pete. Uh, that was great. We got that on film. Also, when I went up on the third floor and tried to communicate with the, with the little boy up there, uh, he finished my count on the dictionary device that we use. That was pretty amazing. And then uh, the last part of the investigation, when the girls were on the third floor, uh, excuse me, second floor, uh, their K2s all went off all at the same time, and they were getting some really good hits from their spirit box slash ghost box with the box saying the name Jimmy, that was the dog that, that used to live here, and a few other uh, responses from the spirit box, which was really great evidence for us. Once we're done with the investigation, we take all of our equipment, set it up, and review the evidence that we put on our audio and video recorders. Once we're done reviewing the evidence, then we bring it back to show the client and explain what we caught. Now we're going to show you the evidence from tonight's investigation, and then we're going to show you evidence from past investigations. As you can clearly hear, the name Pete comes through on the spirit box. If you listen carefully, you can also hear Stacy's name. As you can see on the K2 meters, there's a response when they mention candy. Oh, did you see that? I did. As you can clearly see from this video that the octopus is moving on its own. Well, after about 
an hour in her bedroom trying to make the contact with the little boy. We decided to continue on the third floor. There's another little room there that she, that Marsha uses as a walk-in closet, but it's actually a full-size room. Oh, it's cold in here. Ooh, oh, dude, it just went right back down. Huh. And just as we was exiting that walk-in closet room, this one's there was a huge boom. We, at that point, just stopped. We froze because we could not believe what had just happened. So after this big, loud noise, of course, I turned right to the right. Pete was right in front of me, and the dresser had moved. It had pushed against the wall. So at that point, we're all looking at each other like, okay, what just happened? We've got to try to debunk this somehow. And then, whatever it was, seemed like it took a right and brushed the clothes that were hanging there on the, on the clothes rack. What did it hit? I don't know. That's too light? Mm -hmm. That's what it sounded like. Oh, yes, it did. Look, that one's pushed in. That one's it pushed is. in. That's, that's what it was. You got this? Got this yeah, one, Phil? I'm, I'm, I'm getting it. I'm getting okay, we wow. think that this actually... <gasps> oh, 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 your thing's going off again. Dude, it's freezing in here. Okay, <gasps> this is pushed in, and oh, this is... Oh, my K2 just went off, too. Come on, do something for us. That was crazy. Because this is what it sounded like, just like this. Yeah, exactly. Oh, now it's down. Exactly. I'm gonna pull this back out. It feels funny, dude. That it sounded more crazy. like one of these to me, like a. Was there an electrical? Geez, it was. It was too. It was louder than. It was that. louder. Wow. It, was, it sounded it, like. Jamie, you know what it sounded it, like to me? It sounded like to me. You were behind me. It sounded like you kicked something. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like it was. Well, like we were right here, and it, you, it, was, it was. You were kicked. Kicked. Where was you? You were behind me, right? No, I was in front of you. Because it sounded like. It sounded like you kicked something. It was loud. It was loud. But then I saw this. Wow. I gotta take well, that's what I thought I was... Uh, that, that's what when I came back and looked, it was moving like, yes. not just a little slighted like yes, that. Yes, yes, yes. But really I don't weird. know if I had it on camera or not because I was looking at it, but I might have. But something touched me over here. I swear to God, something tapped my arm just like this. Oh, no. no. Yeah, I was not really on camera, dude. I mean, okay. I was... Should, should we run the ghost box here for a minute? I wonder. Okay. Something's wrong with my camera. What? What is this? Can you do that again? Whoever's in this room, can you do that again? Look, you can. Can you make that go up higher? Can you spike it? Go. Eddie, if that was you, can you do something again for us pretty big like that? Or somebody else, whoever it was, can you do it again for us? That was crazy. I have never had a big hit like that. Never. That was... That's crazy. Can you make it stop now? This was crazy. This was good. This is what I like. This is why I like to hunt. Stuff like this. Yeah. Right. Hold it right. Whatever it did didn't want us leaving. It wanted our attention. It wants us to stay. Yeah. Wow. And, and, and this one was so cold. After the incident with the dresser, we decided to backtrack and go back to her bedroom to have another session to try to find out who was there 
what just happened. It appeared to us that whatever was there on the third floor did not want us to leave. That was awesome. Oh, I wish I wish we'd have had. That, that must have been, you got that on camera. Yeah, that was, you, I was wrong. You, you got that, you wrong. got that, because that was so loud. Yeah. Oh, and I have my digi too, and I was still in this room. Right? So you heard that then? I still think it was that. I still think it was that being pushed in. Oh, I do too. Absolutely. It's strong. Yes. You gotta be strong it, to do that. It was. That's exactly what it was. That's what it sounded like. It did. That's exactly what it was. A little bit faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, that's what it sounded like. But minute, the minute I looked over there, yeah. I didn't see this. Yeah. But just this. It kind of like... Oh my God. Where, where did you go? Don't tell me. You're gonna have to sleep in this room, you know. Yeah, you really should, dude. Don't make her sleep in here. Besides, it wants you around. Sorry to call it to you. Come dude, on, that's make crazy. another noise. I won't sleep in this room. Okay. I won't fall asleep. There's no way. Neither will she. <laughs> I think we should put Rocky in this room. <laughs> Could be, uh, could be crazy, you guys. That's crazy. I can't believe it. That is just too wild. Finally, they finally do something significant. Let's go back in this room and pretend like we're going to leave again. Okay, we're going to leave this room. Can you make that noise again for us? Oh, my K2. Solid. Whatever it is, it's not bad. No. That's for sure. But strong when it wants to. Yes, definitely. Well, it took a ton of my energy. I have full energy again. Mm -hmm. And it, it was hers, too. I Dude, mean, literally, I Jamie, I'm on my bed going. Yeah. I know. Me, too. Felt like I was going to pass out with her. Okay. I want to know. Oh, oh. Are you standing right in front of me? <laughs> Go on. I want to know who moved, who pushed the dresser? As you can see in this video taken from one of our infrared still cameras, you see an orb come from the left hand side of the screen. It then hovers around the table, then leaves. Also notice that our investigator feels the presence of this orb and turns around. Now the orb comes back, the investigator rubs her arm, as if she can feel the orb making contact with her. In this close up, you can clearly see the orb touching the investigator. Now as you noticed, the orb leaves, goes behind her as I enter the room. You can see this orb has intelligent behavior as it reacts to me and the investigator. In this piece of evidence, pay attention to the lower right hand of the screen. This orb comes out of the wall, morphs into three orbs, comes up to our camera, and then goes back into the wall. We have caught many orbs during investigations, and this orb shows signs of intelligence due to the fact of the way it looks, the way it turns. This orb does not look like dust, does not look like an insect, and just look at the way it spins and twists.
I have to say that the carriage house is haunted from the evidence that we've collected there and the numerous investigations that we've been on. I agree with Ken, my partner. It just seems that every time we go over there for another investigation, we catch more and more evidence. Since the East Coast ghost trackers have been here, and I can and basically, as I use the word validate many times through this interview, I've said that word, but it's helped me be able to, to be more open about the fact that there is paranormal activity here. Uh, so I ha it is on my website, and people ha are calling more often than not to say they want to stay in an inn that is experiencing um, the supernatural. Uh, if people don't bring it up, I don't bring it up. Um, only if they have an experience and they ask me point blank, uh, is this place haunted, will I share some of my stories with them. We, the East Coast Ghost Trackers, believe the entities that reside there at the Care Chelsea Inn to be a positive and friendly energy that welcome the living. It's almost like the entities there want us there because they have a story to tell and eventually we will get the whole story. I have to say I have ne never been afraid. I have a, a great relationship with my entities as I call them. We have learned to respect each other. I, I told them from the beginning that I didn't want them to leave. The East Coast Ghost Trackers have been the only group that I have let in here because I have not ever wanted to exploit them. I've wanted to have uh, a, a good relationship with them. I share this, this home with them and I wanted them to be comfortable.